Welcome back. It's still plus politics. As the Edo State gubernatorial election draws closer, trouble equally brews in the state as a showdown is set to take place as the 17 lawmakers who oppose Governor Gadwin Obaseki insist on holding sittings at the House of Assembly complex. These are the same lawmakers who impeached the Speaker of the House, Francis Okie and his deputy when the complex was cut enough for repairs or renovation. The speaker, however, has stated that the 14 members elect, not yet inaugurated, no longer have seats to occupy in the assembly, following the declaration of their seats as vacant. Joining us to make sense of this uh, seemingly uh, confusion is uh, Henry Idahagbon, former commissioner for justice in Edo State. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Thanks for having me. And joining us in this conversation is also Osarugo Ahibe, a legal practitioner. Good evening, Mr. Ahibe. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for having me. Okay, let me start by way of first mention. Let me start with uh, the former commissioner. Um, uh, the argument is still out there. They have not been inaugurated. Not only did they carry out impeachment process, now they are talking about using the complex that has been under lock and key. What do you have to say? Well, my response is uh, very direct. Democracy is about uh, majority rule. The minority can have their say, but the majority will have their way. The 17 members have been duly inaugurated. The mace was present. The clerk of the house was present and they were duly inaugurated. The impeachment of the former de uh, the deputy speaker was um, uh, uh, the speaker, uh, in my own opinion, was legal and it was good. And then, of course, today we have a new speaker in the of Edo State House of Assembly in the person of Honorable Tiger Edoro. Okay. The who does not make the monk. It is not the building, uh, the House of Assembly building that makes the assembly. It is the members. In mm. fact, yesterday I told Edora they should get a canopy inside the museum premises at Ring Road <laughs> and hold their cities there. Mm. Let okay. us not forget Let that by June last year, the house was almost evenly divided. 14 members uh, against 10. But now we are talking of 19 members to a miserable five. So they have the majority. Okay. And then uh, we have a house I think, of assembly I think that's, now. That's, that's clear about your position on that opening remark. Let me listen to Osarugo because I'm not a lawyer, but I understand that some people did say that uh, whatever happens outside the complex is a nullity. But the learned man has just told us that they can even get a canopy. What do you have to say to that? Well, firstly, um, I must let the public know that... Um, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is what guides the day-to-day -day activities of the citizens of the state. Now, going by the clear provisions of the Constitution, Section 94 uh, in particular, it says that for members of uh, members elect of the House to take their seat in the House of Assembly, they must first of all um, um, declare their assets and liabilities. Now, when that is done, they bring the evidence of that declaration to the clerk of the house. And then the clerk of the house uh, causes the process of inauguration to take place. This is what transpired on the 17th of June 2019 when you saw that an inauguration took place. And that house has been sitting since then. Now, one is therefore at a loss as to how a second process of inauguration would have taken place. And, and let me quickly remind you that when that inauguration of 17th June took place, Certain members of the House who were not present challenged the inauguration of 17th June 2019. In fact, that matter is pending in court. 
part of the issues they are canvassing in court is that they were excluded from the inauguration process. Now, and then they are also saying that the process that brought about the Speaker of the House is illegal. So my worry is if you are challenging the process that brought in an individual and you are saying that that process is, is illegal, how could you sit in a parallel house and declare the seat of that speaker in, uh, and, and, and impeach him? So I would have preferred that they follow through with the case they have instituted in court Allow the court to come to a final one way or Mr. the Ibe, other. Sorry, I think your point yes, is also please. clear. But how do we explain that such number of people are not allowed? They've not represented the people that voted in, in for more than a year. Well, that is why when I started, I referred you to Section ninety four of the Constitution. The condition precedent for a member elect to take his to take his seat in the hallowed chambers is that he must declare his assets and liabilities. As we speak, there is no evidence whatsoever that these other uh, members elect have um, have complied with the provisions of the constitution. Okay. I'll come back to you. Let, let's quickly get uh, Mr. Idaabon's perspective on this. Uh, what's your reaction yeah. to what uh, is me, the submission me, of Aigbe as... Let me inform my learned friend, let me inform my learned friend for free that all the 14 members that were unlawfully, unjustly excluded during last year's inauguration, they have met all the constitutional preconditions. They have declared their assets, and they have the evidence of their declaration of assets. Let us not forget that on the day of that illegal inauguration, they addressed a press conference at Golden Tulip Hotel, calling on the governor to inaugurate them. And later that day, the governor sent talks to go and physically beat up the House members. It's on the documentary evidence of it. It's on the internet, Google it. And then proceeded to inaugurate his 10 members at about 9.30 p.m. With one of them apparently wearing flip-flops and another one wearing shorts. And we all know, let us not be, let us not be sanctimonious about this, that no inauguration is not done at night. And that is not the appropriate accoutrement, appropriate dressing a politician who has contested and won an election will wear to an inauguration. My little friend has made every weather of Section 94. But before you get to Section 94, you have to pass through Section 91, which stipulated that defines the membership and the constitution of the House of Assembly. They must not be less than a particular number and they cannot be higher than a particular number. Are you telling the Nigerians now, the listeners, that the numbers that have been sitting illegally since last year, they meet the provisions of Section 91 of the Constitution? Noted. The you will respond to that. Mr. Mr. Idaabon, I will, yes. I, will, I will make him respond to that. But what do you have to say about the fact that there is a pending issue? Why are they not exploring it? What is happening? Is it that the, the, the justice is being... Uh, uh, drug. See, justice delayed, justice delayed is justice denied. The governor and their group, they know that our judicial process is on the slow side. And there are various factors for this. So the, 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 the plan is to wear them out, let them go to court. The governor will spend uh, four years. The four years will be over. The case will still be in court. Okay, good. Thank you for that response. Let me quickly go back to Osorogo. Do you think there's distortion in his narration? <laughs> Mr. Ahibe, are you there? Yes. Okay. What do you, what do you have against his narration? That's Mr. Idaabon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
This is obviously a network about, problem. Okay. Now we can hear you. Okay, I said I'm careful not to go into details about the matter that is pending in court because it's subjudice. The truth is this. The issue about the election of the speaker is a matter before the court. The issue about the inauguration process is a matter before the court. A matter that was instituted by persons who have taken steps against, uh, in a bid to preempt the decision of the court. That is on the one hand. On the second hand, it is a well-known fact and by the clear interpretation of the Constitution. The drafters of the Constitution did not envisage that all the members elect must be present on the day of the inauguration. Now, if for one reason or the other, one of the members elect is not present, are you saying the inauguration process cannot take place? In this case, it's we not one. Case in hand. Mr. Mm. Ibe, in this case, yes. it is not one. We're talking about the majority. And are we also ignorant of the fact that there could be a clandestine move to deny this number? Now, the point, the point, the point is in the, 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 the facts are clear. Now, if you are invited for an inauguration and you choose to stay away, the question is, were they blame, invited? Were they how invited? Do you blame the leadership, the, the clerk of the house, for going ahead to carry out the process? You cannot stay away from the house. Sorry, can you answer that question if you are privy to the right answer? Were they invited? They were invited, and you know, By like, who? Like, like I said, like I said, I'm careful not to mention okay, so this is in court. to make comment about that because. That is even part of the issue that is pending in court. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I'm yes. so sorry. Our time is fast spent, and we just have 30, 30 seconds to round up this segment. I just got a call. I mean, a, a, a hint now. So, Mr. Idahabon, are you saying that um, whatever these members do, they can go ahead to occupy the complex? Of course, yes. Of, of course, yes. My learned friend went to the university for four years or five years, depending on when he was called. He went to the law school for one year, and then he was given a day to present himself for call to bar. Do you think that any reasonable man will refuse to present himself for call to bar after studying for five years or six years? It's a day that everybody looks forward to. I am a politician, and I know what we go through to contest and win an election. And after winning, and I have won before, I have been sworn into office before. Everybody look forward to that day. You invite your friends and family and political associates. Okay. These guys were not invited. Okay. They had a nocturnal uh, inauguration at 9.30 p.m. Okay, sir. Is that the legislative hour? Thank have you so much. Have there any precedent for 9.30 p.m. inauguration in the whole of Africa? Okay. Why should I just say to be different? Okay, thank you no, so no, much. I, I think I it's speak, a very I clear speak position. Not as a lawyer, I speak as a realist. Okay, and good. A pragmatist. That, that, okay. The law was made for man and not man for law. Aibe, can you also drop your garments now as a lawyer and also speak as a realist? What do you think is going to happen? Well, at the end of the day, two things will happen. And those people will decide who they want to govern them. And the second At the thing. end of the day, the provisions of the Constitution, which is sacrosanct, will eventually hold sway. So, well, it's unfortunate that the uh, institutions of government are being uh, trampled upon, and uh, it's unfortunate that the judiciary is being made to look like a toothless good dog. Okay. But at the end of the day, Justice will prevail. And, 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 and let's I, leave I will, it there. I will say quickly. And and uh, I hear you. Please let's leave it there. Thank you so much for your for thank your you. position and thank you, uh, Mr. Henry Idahagbon, for your position. And uh, let me also borrow the words from both of you that there are those people will decide and uh, they will decide rightly. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. You.
Thank you. Okay. And to our viewers, it's not yet over. I will take a break now. When I come back, I will be giving you my take. And to my take, especially on the religious debate, especially when it is sensitive, when it is a sensitive one for that matter. But I can't hide my disapproval of the pardon of Boko Haram terrorists being given amnesty. I'm in support of de-radicalizing de the sect members, but amnesty for them to the extent of being given 20,000 naira monthly is unacceptable. This becomes more worrisome when the victims are yet to get justice, when the displaced are wrangling in poverty and pains. I therefore propose that the program should be discontinued and the funds should be channeled to rehabilitate the IDPs in several places. The supposed repentant members should not only be monitored, justice must be served on those who still practice act of insurgency and feed their allies in Boko Haram with information. We are not, and I repeat, we are not prepared for this act of pardon. And that's all for my take this evening. Thank you for staying with us. More interesting conversations return tomorrow, same time. Until next time, stay safe. I am Kayode Ladeinde saying bye.